Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Louise Hubar begins now. Good evening. First tonight, the Tasmanian community is reeling following a horrific two-vehicle crash that claimed the lives of three young people. The incident sparking renewed calls for drivers to take care behind the wheel as the horror year sees the state's road toll spike once again. Scattered debris strewn across South Arm Highway as tragedy strikes in the tight-knit community of Sanford. A devastating uh, incident to lose three lives in one uh, crash uh, is horrendous. All young lives taken too soon, one of them just 19 years old. People that are, that are essentially just starting out their lives and tragically three of them have lost their lives. Police arrived to the confronting scene shortly after five o'clock yesterday afternoon following reports two cars had collided. It appears that a, a vehicle uh, travelling uh, towards Hobart has uh, lost control and gone onto the wrong side of the road uh, where it's been struck by another vehicle that was uh, heading uh, in the opposite direction. Two people were able to be saved and remain in the Royal Hobart Hospital in a serious but stable condition. It was a nasty crash and um, we just remain hopeful that uh, that will be positive outcome for the remaining two. Police are continuing to investigate how the tragedy came to be, urging anyone who may have witnessed the blue Toyota Corolla in the area prior to the crash to come forward. We just want to know if someone saw it and if they did how it was being driven because it could quite clearly be relevant to the investigations. Tasmanians urged to help avoid the trauma. We are seeking to change the behaviour to stop these crashes from happening so that families and friends don't have to deal with these sets of terrible circumstances. Grace Evans, 7 Tasmania News. A man is in custody tonight after another man was found dead on the side of a northwest road. Police allege the pair had earlier committed a robbery but are yet to work out how the man died. Police left with many unknowns. We're investigating a burglary in the area. Um, we're investigating a deceased male in the area and we're trying to link the two. Emergency services called to Pardo Road about 6am after a deceased man aged in his 60s was found on the side of the road. The man not from the Devonport area. I don't believe that there's a car accident involved. The male, deceased male has injuries consistent with um, blunt force trauma to the head but we do not believe and it's not consistent with a car accident. Initial investigations suggest an accomplice had earlier broken into a nearby transport business and stolen a Hyundai Getz. After driving from the scene, he has come to a stop on Mill Road, just near the airport. Police wish to speak to anyone that may have picked up a mail in the area of Devonport Airport this morning, or they may have witnessed some suspicious activity uh, between 4am and 6am in the area of Pardo, Devonport Airport, or Port Sorrel Road. They say he has dark hair, aged in his 40s and about 170 centimetres tall. The man then arrived back at the first scene after a passerby had already alerted emergency services to the dead man and were at the location. They say he was acting suspiciously and arrested him at the scene. We haven't spoken to him as yet. We're still working our way through um, what's occurred and we will speak to him um, when we have further information that allows us to conduct a, um, or seek to conduct an interview. The road is expected to be closed well into the night to allow forensic works to take place. Police say the investigation itself could last for days as they try to piece together exactly what happened. Police are working to contact his next of kin. Talia Jordan, 7 Tasmania News. Days after the Commission of Inquiry into Child Sexual Abuse finished hearing harrowing evidence about the Ashley Youth Detention Centre, a leading advocate is calling for immediate action. The Children and Young People's Commissioner wants a crisis team set up to address chronic staff shortages. Described as a monster, a gladiator pit and not meeting standards, Tasmanians were left in no doubt this week about the Ashley Youth Detention Centre. For seven days, dozens shared their experiences about its horrific culture. Due to close in two years, an expert says problems still persist. 
It is my view the government need to act urgently, that the centre is in crisis and it needs a crisis response. The Commissioner says severe staff shortages are leaving children locked up almost every day, breaching their human rights. You wait to find out whether enough staff are available to be able to allow young people out of their rooms for any length of time. Writing to Youth Minister Roger Yench, she wants a rapid response crisis team introduced, filled by staff with with experience and youth needs. We need to ensure they are safe, we need to ensure they can access their rights and we need to ensure we're offering them therapeutic interventions. We've completely transformed the way that Ashley already operates. The Ashley of today is not the Ashley of five, ten and certainly twenty years ago. The Treasurer also hinting more staff could soon be hired. The government uh, looks forward to making uh, to seeing some new resources brought to Ashley in the near future, in particular new personnel. But the pace of the response is not quick enough for the Commissioner. I've seen, for example, no whole of government expression of interest uh, seeking people who may be appropriately qualified to fill the gap. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. A Clarendon Vale property has been left with $100,000 worth of damage after fire tore through the building early this morning. Crews were called to the scene just after 4 o'clock, working to bring the blaze under control. The cause is still unknown as investigations continue. Commuters are set to benefit from more travel options as the Derwent Ferry welcomes a Saturday route to its timetable for the first time. More than 100,000 passengers have already utilised the service since its inception, with the expansion hoped to create more flexibility for transport. Affordable, convenient, but what this initiative will do on Saturdays is actually really connect Greater Hobart, the two sides of the river. The community won't have to wait long to reap the benefits, with the new service planned to be up and running for summer. The junior basketball season has come to a close in Tasmania with the Southern Conference's grand final weekend wrapping up this afternoon. After the boys' matches were decided yesterday, today was the girls' time to shine at Kingston. Seven grand finals in age groups ranging from under-12s to under-19s were run and won. The next generation of local stars having their chance to make a name for themselves. Fifteen deciders took place over the course of the entire weekend. The Australian Antarctic Festival wrapped up today with Tasmanians having their final chance to take a sneak peek into life on the continent. The weather was anything but wintry as hundreds gathered at the Mawson's Hut Museum in Hobart. A number of different exhibitions and interactive displays were on show and there was even the chance to meet a penguin. Organisers say the event is aimed at recognising the value of the sector, also promoting Hobart as a gateway to the continent. Starting with the TSL and Sam Siggins has joined an elite club with the Lauderdale forward winning his second Alastair Lynch medal last night. He polled 30 votes, including nine best on ground performances, finishing ahead of Kingborough's Kieran Lovell. Siggins becomes just the third player in TSL history to win both the medal and the Player of the Year award in the same season. He and his Southern Bomber teammates will now turn their attention to Saturday's elimination final clash against bitter rivals Clarence. Semi-final action continues in local leagues across the state. Penguin and Burnie faced off in the NWFL at Dial Park earlier this afternoon. The Dockers winning by 24 points after being down 14 points at half time. Meanwhile at Hillwood, Bracknell took on South Launceston in the NTFA. The Redlegs coming away with a 27-point victory, moving on to the next round of finals. In the NBL one and the Hobart Chargers will play for Premiership glory next weekend after defeating Kilsyth in the NBL one Premiership final this afternoon. A 24 to 13 first quarter putting them in prime position before leading by 10 points with a quarter to play. The Cobras however fought back narrowing the gap to just a point with less than five minutes to play. Jack Jumper star Sam McDaniel managed to ease the nervous crowd. Daniel with a little crossover, spin, the layup, yes. How many of those spin moves are we going to see down the stretch here? <laughs> 
The Launceston Tornadoes weren't as lucky, however, bowing out to Ringwood in a thriller. They fought back from 12 points down at three-quarter time to send the game to overtime. Ringwood breaking hearts with just seconds to play. Hamida. Crosses over Tolo, kicks Pass. to Toronto. Two-point basket scored. Timeout on the floor. The, the Hawks winning 77 to 75. Good evening. Launceston was the state's top at 20 degrees today. Hobart 19, 15 in Burnie, and a top of 16 in Devonport. Strawn 19, 17 on King and Flinders Island. Friendly Beaches 15 and 10 at Liawini. The satellite picture shows sea fog over the west of Flinders Island and areas of convective cloud extending over most of the state. A frontal cloud band can be seen over and well south of the bite with another band of cloud to the west associated with the trough and there's some high level cloud cover over central Australia. Tomorrow we see a cold front moving from south Australia to southwest of Tasmania with an associated low near Kangaroo Island. While a ridge of high pressure is lying over Queensland and a high over WA pushes a ridge inland. North to northeasterly winds of 10 to 20 knots changing northwest to southeasterly in the southwest during the afternoon and evening. Partly cloudy and a top of 20 in Hobart tomorrow. A possible afternoon shower in Dover and 21 degrees in Ouse. Launceston a shower or 2 and 20 degrees. Showers at times for Devonport, Scottsdale 17. Showers in Burnie, Strawn 20 and a top of 15 degrees in Stanley. Mostly sunny in St Helens and partly cloudy and 19 in Swansea and Ross. Showers across the state on Tuesday, clearing from the northwest coast in the afternoon, 16 in Launceston and 15 in Hobart. Wednesday, showers about the west and far south, mostly fine elsewhere with some patchy morning fog in the north. And Thursday, showers about the west, south and Bass Strait Islands, extending statewide during the afternoon, before contracting to the far northeast and southwest in the evening. A possible morning shower in Brisbane tomorrow, Sydney 21, showers developing and windy in Melbourne, a top of 15 in Adelaide and sunny and 33 in Darwin. And right now in Hobart it's mostly clear, Launceston 13 and 12 in Devonport and it looks like today was a sneak peek into spring's weather blue. And that's all your news for now. Thank you for joining us. Have a lovely evening. Good night.